friends. Hey friends. Hey friends, it's me Alana. Welcome back to my channel. some flowers in a world full of weeds. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. It is me, Alana. For this video, I wanted to do my top reads of 2020. So I read a lot of really good books last year and it was kind of hard to narrow down the ones that I wanted to talk about, but I managed to do it and I'm so excited to show you my top faves. Some of these probably aren't a surprise <laughs> because I pretty much talked about them all year. But again, you I feel like you can never really talk about your favorite book too much. So I'm just gonna go ahead and dive right in and get this video started. And these are in no particular order, by the way. So the first book I have is One of Us Is Next by Karen M. McManus. She is kind of my queen of YA thriller right now to me. I really enjoy all of her books. And I finally read this one and I loved it just as much as the others. I thought it was really good. I thought she did such a good job of creating an original story and I love the fact that with each story she writes, it's all her own. Like she never repeats anything from previous books or never uses the same plot twist twice or anything like that. So I actually really enjoy that about her writing. This one is a continuation from her first book, One of Us is Lying. And it continues, I think, a year after everything happened in that first book. And with this one, you get new characters. You do get uh Bronwyn who you see in the first book and is the younger sister to one of the original characters in the first book and that she's the main character of this one and so she kind of ties back to the original characters too which allows you to see how they're doing within this book but then you meet her other friends who are tied into the mystery of this story and so someone is trying to continue the legacy of Simon from the first book and they create a game where they text people like a truth or dare type thing and they have to like do it in order to keep their secrets from being revealed and someone ends up dying and then it becomes a whole murder mystery. So I loved this. I thought it was really interesting again and I'm excited to see what else uh, Karen does in her next books. Next book I have is Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard. I'm actually really surprised that this made this list, but I could not have this list without this added on. I read this in November of last year and I absolutely adored it. I thought it was just so good and so intriguing. So I hope the rest of the series is, stays like this, honestly, for me. But if nothing else, this book was definitely a uh, a big hit with me. It's about a girl named Mare who lives in the world where red bloods like her are basically the poor, the like underbelly of society, nobody really likes them, nobody wants to be them, and the high people of society are the silver bloods and so they have usually have the special powers, they're the royalty, they hold all the power basically. And so Mare is discovered to have her own special abilities, which shouldn't be a thing because of the fact that she is a red, but there's something in her blood that makes her special. And with that, she gets pulled into these political plots. And, and it's really intriguing. I really liked it for the most part. And I'm definitely excited to see what else Victoria Aveyard does. Next, I have A Match Made in Mahandi by Nandini Bajpai. So I really, really adored this book. I thought it was the cutest thing ever. It just gave me all the really good feelings. It's about a girl who comes from a long line of matchmakers within her family. So they have the special ability to really uh, see really good things within people and just match them up based on values and just their personalities and really make worthwhile matches, essentially. So she doesn't really want to follow in her family's footsteps. She wants to be an artist, but her family is so proud when they find out that she has this ability as well. So she decides to have a little fun and make an app out of this ability. And she 
basically makes her high school the test subjects. So she makes a whole like a matchmaking app and sets it free on all of the students in her high school and manages to like set people up basically. And it's really cute. I thought it was a fun story. If you're looking for something cute and lighthearted to read, I definitely recommend this. Alrighty, so next I have The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I love this lady so much. She is one of my queens of YA now, and I really, really enjoyed this book. So it's about a girl who finds out that she has been left this man's entire estate when he dies, and she doesn't know why because she has no connection to him. She's never met him. She's never been anywhere near him, and so the whole mystery of the book is how she ends up being this guy's he's so like heir to his fortune despite the fact that he has an entire family that he's basically disowned and it's really interesting too because at some point it becomes kind of like a who's trying to kill her plot twist as well because someone ends up trying to kill her because of all this and I'm just really glad I read this again it was super good I loved the mystery I loved the fact that there were so many riddles that she had to solve in the story and I think Jennifer Lynn Barnes just does really good job writing like thrillers and mysteries in general so I'm really excited for the second book to come out this year and honestly this was my favorite moment of 2020 was getting this book from Little Brown Books because I managed to win the ARC in a Goodreads giveaway and then I was sent this as well and honestly it was amazing because I was like this is my favorite author and the fact that I was able to just get her books at all was cool so yeah favorite moment. Alright, next book I have is A Heart and a Body in the World by Deb Coletti. I loved this so much. It really hit me in places I wasn't expecting to hit and I just don't even have words to really describe how I feel about this book because it was just so good to me and I I will give you a little bit of a synopsis, but I recommend you going into this book without knowing anything because that's what I did and it really like hit home for me. But also, if you are easily triggered, I would also look into the trigger warnings as well before you do that because it does have some high key triggers. So, uh, trigger warnings for shootings, for death, for grief, for depression and anxiety and um i'm sure there are more i just cannot remember all the top of my head but i highly highly recommend you look up the trigger warnings if you need that um but it's about a girl who basically starts running and doesn't stop and as she's running you learn why she's running <laughs> like you see her working through her grief and her story and why running is the thing she needs to do right now and I, again, I love this story. I thought it was so good. It made me so emotional, especially when you finally get to the part where she really reveals like everything and you're just like, wow. And I just admired the character, the main character, because honestly, I wouldn't be running. I'd just be sobbing in a corner if I like went through what she had. So again, really loved it. Definitely recommend if you're looking for some good contemporary, but again, also recommend looking up those trigger warnings if you need it. Next book I have here is More Than Maybe by Erin Han. I loved Erin Han. I fell in love with Erin Han's writing when I first read You'd Be Mine by her, and it was such a good story that when I saw this was coming out, I could not resist wanting it as well because again she became a fave and I loved this one just as much as I loved the first one. So it's about two kids who really love music and they basically connect over that love. So Veda is trying to become a music critic. She has her own blog where she uh, like reviews music and bands and stuff like that and she wants to really make a career out of that um, but at the same time she's dealing with a lot of family stuff her father is just not a person she enjoys and he keeps making appearances and it just is not the time <laughs> and then you have Luke who runs a uh, podcast with his brother about music essentially and he has 
really been interested in beta for like a really long time and so when this book starts it's him finally taking the step to really uh talk to her and have a conversation and basically make his presence known to her and honestly it was just so cute and i thought this was a really fun read too and if you really love um books about music or surrounded with music i think this is a good book to pick up next book i have is full disclosure by cameron garrett this was a high key fave I really enjoyed this book. I thought it was written so well and the characters were done so well also. It's about a girl who has HIV and she basically has to switch schools and at this new school she basically has to decide how she wants to tell people, if she wants to tell people about her diagnosis and what that really means for her, especially when someone is threatening to tell her secret, when she starts catching the interest of one of the popular boys in her school and I thought this was uh, done so well. I thought the dialogue surrounding HIV and sex and just that whole narrative was really cool and really informative at the same time and I just am so glad that I was able to read this. If I will say trigger warnings for talk of like death and of course HIV and uh depression and I believe anxiety so I would definitely look into more trigger warnings for this too if you need them but again I thought it was so good I'm excited to pick up anything else Cameron Garrett writes because I think she is awesome now we're getting into the nitty-gritty so the next book I have is Renegade by Marissa Meyer this is not a surprise because I literally talk about this book all the time but I just think Marissa Meyer did such a good job with this I loved it so much love superheroes thought she did such a good job fleshing out the characters and making re them really more than one-dimensional people and I'm just looking forward to seeing how this ends but also really nervous because I want everybody to be okay basically Next, I just have the entire An Ember in the Ashes series. This whole series just really made my 2020. This got me through 2020. I kid you not. This was such an amazing series. I fell in love with the characters, even Helene by the end. I fell in love with the stories and the way it was told. And Saba Tahir just did such a good job of really, like making you love this <laughs> i kid you not i just i love this series this is one of my favorite series ever now and i'm just so happy i hopped on this bandwagon at the beginning of 2020 and continue on to the end i can't even pick out a favorite book because they're all so good so yeah all right and the last book i have on this list is not a surprise to you it shouldn't be a surprise to you unless you're new here because i literally have talked about this all fall season i've said it's my favorite book of the year i haven't changed that opinion at all and that is legend born by tracy dion this is my absolute all-time favorite book of 2020. this really really along with a number of the ashes got me through the year because it was just so good and it really especially with everything that was going on in june this really got me through it like that was a really hard time and it was so draining and exhausting and there were times where i just didn't really want to get out of bed ever and so this book for some reason just helped me especially because i know the author wrote it out of her own grief and I think sensing that really helped me with my grief and yeah I just I don't know what else to say in that regard but I kid you not like if you have not read this I think you should it's it's just that amazing like I I don't really don't talk in definites about books because I know everybody's opinions are different and that's okay but I think this is one almost everybody could love if they gave it a try and even if you don't love it I at least encourage to still give it a try because I think it's that it's worth that much but yeah <laughs> so this is about a girl named Brie who is dealing with the effects of her mother's death and she goes away to this early college program and discovers that there is a secret magical society on campus and they may have a connection to the death of her mother 
And so from there, she basically inserts herself into that narrative. Uh, it's, it's such a good story. It's so diverse. It handles a lot of the conversations around grief so well, in my opinion. And I just, I don't even know. I'm so excited for the second book to come out and just to see what happens next. I I just have no words. I don't know what else I can say to make y'all see all the devotion I have to this, but I feel like my silence is enough. All right, so those are the books that I absolutely loved in 2020. I'm so excited to see what gains my love in 2021. I'm sure there will be some awesome things. If you like the video, please go ahead and like it down below. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, please leave all that in the comment section. If you're not good at commenting, I'm gonna go ahead and say leave me an emoji down below. Let me know what your favorite book of 2020 was, please. I would love to just like know that. And maybe I'll add some of them onto my list to try in 2021. And if you wanna see more videos from me, please hit that subscribe button down below. You are all sunflowers in a world full of weeds.